Hela is located in northwest Jordan at a rich water source within the eastern foothills of the Jordan Valley. Close to the modern village of Tabakot Falls, some 27 kilometers south of the Sea of Galilee. The site is situated 130 kilometers north of Amman, a drive of about an hour and a half, an hour by car from Irbid, in the north of the country. Today, the city's ruins, predominantly temples, churches, and housing, have been partially excavated by teams of archaeologists. They attract thousands of tourists annually but especially in spring. During which time the area is awash with spring flowers. The Semitic name of the ancient, pre-Hellenistic site, was Pahil or Pile. Pile is the name under which the city is mentioned in early Egyptian historical texts. Pella is the name of Alexander the Great's birthplace in Macedonia. It is not known who founded the Hellenistic town of Pella in Transjordan, which makes it hard to assess who exactly gave it its Greek name and precisely why. Stephanos, a quite late source, seems to indicate that it was founded by Alexander himself, and Ptolemy III Eurgetes is another possible founder. The Princeton Encyclopedia of Classical Sites write that it was founded by veterans of Alexander's army, and named it after the Pella in Greece which was the birthplace of Alexander. Getzel M. Cohen sees it as plausible that the name Pella was chosen either due to its similarity with the older Semitic name, or due to a common characteristic of both the Macedonian and Transjordan sites, their richness in springs. For the Greek meaning of the name, see the etymology paragraph in the article on the original Pella. Originally the town was called Pylum. Berenic in Greek, often Latinized to Berenice, is another name of Pella from the Hellenistic period, based on only one source, Stephanos. The Macedonian name Berenic was often used in the royal family of Ptolemaic Egypt, who conquered southern Syria and thus Pella in 301, and ruled over the city until 218 BCE when they lost it to the Seleucid king Antiochus III. It is not possible to assess after which Ptolemy the city was renamed. Possible candidates being the wife of Ptolemy I, a daughter of Ptolemy II, and the wife of Ptolemy III. Cohen presumes that under Seleucid rule, the city reverted right away to being called Pella. Philippia is another name of the city from the Roman period, seen by Cohen as an attempt of claiming Martius Philippus as its founder as a reaction to other cities in the region claiming an illustrious, but fictitious pedigree. The Arab geographer of Greek origin, Yakut, could find no Arabic meaning for the modern name Fallen believed it to be a foreign origin. Pella has been almost continuously occupied since Neolithic times. During the Hellenistic period, the town formed with other like-minded towns in the region a political and cultural league known as the Decapolis. An alliance that grew in stature and economic importance to become regionally influential under Roman jurisdiction. However, Pella expanded to its largest size during the Byzantine period, when it was a bishopric in the province of Palestina Secunda. In Islamic times, after 635 CE, the town became part of the Jinda al-Urdun, but in time was negatively impacted by natural calamities and eclipsed by the geopolitical successes of the nearby towns of Amman, Basin and especially Tabariah. The University of Sydney's Pella excavation project discovered at Tabakot fall the remains of Neolithic housing dated to CA. 6000 BCE. The Australian teams found storage complexes from the Chalcolithic period. The ongoing University of Sydney excavations, since being headed by Stephen Burke in the 1990s, has been focusing on the site's Bronze Age and Iron Age temples and administrative buildings. Early Bronze Age in May 2010 Burke announced to the press the discovery of a city wall and other structures dating back to 3400 BCE and some even to 3600 BCE, indicating that the city standing at the top of Pellas Tel Husan at the time was a formidable city-state around 3400 to 3200 BCE. At the same time the cities of Sumer were taking shape. The official University of Sydney excavation page only mentions early Bronze Age stone defensive platforms from CA. 3200 BCE. Middle Bronze Age The Middle Bronze Age city of CA. 1800 BCE boasted massive mud brick city walls. Australian archaeologists also discovered Middle and Late Bronze Age temples and palatial residences, as well as a Late Bronze Egyptian governor's residence from CA. 1350 BCE containing clay tablets. Migdal-type temple at Pella, first built in the Middle Bronze Age and destroyed in the Iron Age, 2001 a Canaanite temple was uncovered during the 1994-2003 campaigns. The city was first mentioned in the 19th century BCE in Egyptian execration texts, and it continued to flourish throughout the Bronze Age. 
Late Bronze Age Australian archaeologists also discovered Middle and Late Bronze Age temples and palatial residences, as well as a Late Bronze Egyptian governor's residence from CA. 1350 BCE containing clay tablets. In the Amarna period, the city was ruled by Mutbal, a son of Labayo of Shechem. Apparently, they rebelled and expanded their territory and associated with the Habiru. While the cause is not known, the dawn of the Iron Age meant the end of power in Pylon. The urban heart of the Iron Age city kingdom seems to have suffered a major destruction in the later 9th century, from which it did not recover. Re-established as an urban center under the early Seleucids, its ancient name must still have been known, for its new, Greek name was a close synonym, Pella, a birthplace of Alexander the Great in Macedon. As yet no public buildings from the Hellenistic period have been identified, although well-appointed private houses attest to their integration into the wider norms of urban living, such as wall paintings and statuary. Several of these houses suffered what appears to be the same fiery destruction in the late Hellenistic period. This has been attributed to a massive destruction by the Hasmonean king, Alexander Janaeus, about 83 or 82 BCE. From Josephus, it is clear that Pella had been damaged and so needed some restoration by Pompey decades afterwards, but his specific reference to the destruction of Pella by Janaeus because its inhabitants refusing to follow Jewish customs seems to refer to a different place, it is listed as if amongst southern Levantine cities and out of its more normal sequence between Gadara, Gerasa, and Scythopolis. Map of the Decapolis showing the location of Pella in 63 BCE, the Roman general Pompey integrated the region into the eastern portion of the Roman Empire. Converting the old Seleucid Empire into the province of Coel Syria and incorporating Judea as a client kingdom. A group of cities claiming Greek Hellenistic foundations asked Pompey for freedom from the threat of incorporation within Rome's new client state of Hasmonean Judea. Pompey agreed, and these cities were called the Decapolis, literally, the Ten Cities, although the lists which have survived vary in composition and number. Pella, however, is consistently a Decapolis city, and the city in the northernmost bounds of the region known as Perea. If these cities had previously dated their years from their foundation under Alexander the Great or Seleucus Indicator, they now honored Pompey by counting 63 BC as a new year one. Like most cities within the empire, Pella would have had its own town council. It also minted coins in the Roman period. Pella was incorporated within Roman Judean territory. According to Josephus, Scaurus laid waste the country around Pella. Pella was one of eleven administrative districts in Roman Judea. During the outbreak of the First Jewish-Roman War, when the Syrian inhabitants of Caesarea had slain its Jewish citizens, there was a general Jewish uprising against neighboring Syrian villages, who sought revenge for the murder of their countrymen, during which time Pella was ransacked and destroyed. Growing Jewish descent over Roman military occupation in Judea brought about Roman reprisals against Jewish enclaves in the regions of Galilee, the coastal plains of Judea, Idumea and Perea, until, at length, the Roman army had subdued all insurgents and their military governors established during the Jewish revolt. University of Sydney digs unearth the theatre, baths, and nymphium of the Roman city of CA. 150 CE. First Christians, the flight to Pella in what is known as the flight to Pella, sometime before the Roman destruction of Jerusalem in 70 CE, tradition holds that a Jewish Christian sect of Nazareans made their way to Pella and settled in the city which became a Jewish Christian hub during the early days of Christianity. According to Epiphanius, the disciples had been miraculously told by Christ to abandon Jerusalem because of the siege it was about to undergo. Epiphanius claims that after the destruction, some returned to Jerusalem. Similarly to Epiphanius, Eusebius of Caesarea recounts how Pella was a refuge for Jerusalem Christians who were fleeing the First Jewish-Roman War in the first century CE. Pella is alleged to have been the site of one of Christianity's earliest churches. But no evidence has been found of this. According to historian Edward Gibbon, the early Church of Jerusalem fled to Pella after the ruin of the Temple, staying there until their return during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. Making it a secondary pilgrimage site for early Christians and modern Christians today. Children playing football in the ancient ruins of Pella in September 2004. In the late Roman and Byzantine periods, the town extended over the ancient Tell, across the broad central valley of the town today known as the Wadi al Germ and over the slopes and summit of the southern hill known as Tel al Husan. By the Byzantine era, Pella had reached its maximum size and, probably, prosperity. Being part of the province of Palestina Secunda, it certainly had a bishop by the year AD 451. 
At least three Triaps Idol churches have been identified within the city, the West Church at the western foot of the Tell, the Civic Complex Church in the Wadi al Jerm at the southeast foot of the Tell in which, due to its size and location, was probably the cathedral, and the elevated East Church on the higher slopes of the Jebel Abu al Qas. A bishop's palace from CA. 550 CE was also discovered. On the Tell, the entire summit was leveled off and a new gridded urban zone constructed during the time of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. The access streets were lined with newly built shops and large buildings, serving both commercial and residential functions. This concern with urban development matched similar activities in other Decapolis towns, such as Gadara and Jerasa, and reflects the role of regional centers in serving local populations during late antiquity. On the plain of the Jordan Valley below Pella, a historically decisive battle took place in January 635 CE between a Muslim army and the Byzantine forces stationed at Pella and Scythopolis. This encounter, one of the earliest between Muslims and Byzantines, came to be known as the Battle of File. As the Byzantine forces practically annihilated in this battle, the Muslims' forces continued to the town of Pella, where they faced little resistance with the town of Pella surrendering by treaty, thereby avoiding occupation by military conquest. Accordingly, the archaeological record shows no disruption attributable to the arrival of Islam, as was the case for nearly all the towns of Bilat Alsham. Rather, the churches, markets and houses of Pella continued in use, with the archaeology showing their progressive modification to meet evolving social and political conditions, as in many of the other towns of the Decapolis Alliance in North Jordan. In particular, a large market and workshop area was installed adjacent to the civic complex church at the heart of the Byzantine town plan. Umuwe Pella, which by the 8th century CE had officially returned to its original Semitic name of File, was totally devastated by the massive 749 Galilee earthquake, as a Jordan Valley rift fault line runs directly under the site. The stone and mud brick two storied houses on the top of the Tell collapsed in on themselves, thereby trapping the inhabitants, human and animal, and preserving a rich collection of fine source from distant regions, such as Egypt and the Arabian Peninsula. Subsequent settlement at Pella, dated from the later 8th to 11th century CE, was reduced in size, but featured an enclosed double courtyard architectural complex in the valley immediately north of the Tell. The configuration of the complex suggests markets, with commercial activities such as glass workshops. An Abbasid Khan dating to CA. 950 CE was unearthed at Pella. Recent work on the Tell has identified widespread rebuilding following the 749 earthquake, as indicated by wall foundations, plastered floors and refuse pits filled with finely worked bone and molded glassware. Evidence for a presence in the Crusader period is slight, a few pottery sherds only, but in the following Ayyubid and Mamluk periods the flat summit of the Tell was inhabited by a large village. Featuring a stone-built mosque with a minbar, residential compounds defined by laneways, and a large cemetery. Australian archaeologists discovered a Mameluk mosque and administrative compound. Late 16th century Ottoman defters list a village called Fall El Tata in the administrative district of Ilun where wheat, barley, and sesame were grown and taxes collected on goats, beehives and water-driven mills. Topographical map Pella, including several significant excavation areas eastern portion of Maine tell the site was first published as part of a regional survey by G. Schumacher. But the first excavation was conducted by Funk and Richardson only in 1958, revealing bronze and Iron Age material in two soundings. From 1966 to 1967, R. H. Smith led a team from Worcester College to prepare a plan of the site and its environs, and begin excavations, but was interrupted by the Six-Day War. A joint project with the University of Sydney, but with separate excavation teams and seasons, explored the city from 1978 to 1985. The Australian expedition was initially directed by Prof. J. B. Hennessy and Dr. A. W. McNichol. Wooster stopped excavations in 1985, but the Australian project continues. Between 1994 and 1996, Pam Watson and Dr. Margaret O'Hay of the University of Adelaide conducted the Pella Hinterland Survey to identify land use in an area of approximately 30 square kilometres around the city. Since the 1990s, with the project headed by Stephen Burke, the focus has been on the site's bronze and Iron Age temples and administrative buildings. A Canaanite temple was uncovered between 1994 and 2003. In 2010 Stephen Burke announced the discovery of a city wall and other structures, some dating back to the mid-4th millennium BCE. Thanks for watching.